Welcome to another episode of Eric Waite Whiskey Studies. In this video, gonna do a review of the Dow Winnie Highland Single Malt Scotch Whiskey. This is the Distillers Edition 2022. And I'm gonna talk about uh, the history of Dow Winnie Distillery. So I was able to visit the distillery back in 2018 and was able to meet Elizabeth Stewart Lizzie, who was the master distiller, the uh, first woman distiller in Scotland and bought a bottle that was dedicated to, dedicated to her at Lizzie's Dram. I'll put a review for that whiskey at the end of this video, but let's look at the history of Dalwani Distillery. In 1897, Alexander McKenzie, John Grant, and George Steller began work on what was originally named Strathspey Distillery. In 1898, production began on Strathspey Distillery, but McKinsey, Grant, and Steller experienced financial difficulties. The distillery was sold to John Somersville and & Company and A.B. Blythe & Sons, who changed the name to Dalwini Distillery. Then architect Charles Doig of Elgin was hired to improve the building. In 1905, A.P. Blythe & owned Dalwini Distillery Company assets were purchased at auction for £1,250 by Cook & Bernheimer, New York and Baltimore, and assigned by them to their subsidiary, James Monroe and Sun Limited. By the way, this is the first time a Scottish distillery was taken over by a foreign company that led to fears of a U.S. takeover of the industry but other Scotch whiskey traders saw it as the first opportunity to promote sales in the North American market. The new owners proudly flew the Stars and Stripes above their warehouses in Leith, where they blended Scotch whiskies to suit the American palate. 1919 to 1920, after beginning the prohibition in the United States, Delwini Distillery was sold to McDonald Greenlees and Williams Limited of Leith, headed by Sir James Calder, who maintained the company name. In 1926, McDonald Greenlees and Williams Limited of Leith was acquired by Distillers Company Limited, DCL, which licensed it to James Buchanan and Company. In 1930, Delwini Distillery operations were transferred to Scottish Malt Distillers Limited. In 1934, Delwini Distillery was badly damaged by a fire and closed. In 1938, Delwini Distillery was reopened. During World War II, the distillery shut down as a result of government restrictions to conserve barley for food supplies. In 1961, Dalwini Distillery Stills became steam heated. In 1968, Dalwini Distillery Floor Maltings ceased operation. In 1986, Dalwini Distillery was completely refurbished. During the modernization of the plant, the worm tub condensers were removed and shell and tube condensers were put in. The character changed, so in 1995, the condensers came out and the worm tubs were reinstalled. From 1988 to 1989, the Dow Winnie 15-year-old was one of the six United Distillers Classic Malts. In 1991, Dow Winnie Distillery Visitor Center was built in 1992, Dalwini Distillery closed for a 3.2 million pound refurbishment. The visitor center opened and the distillery was licensed to James McKinnon and Company. In 1995, Dalwini Distillery opened again. The Dalwini Distillers Edition 2022 Single Malt Scotch Whiskey. It was double matured and finished in Oloroso Sherry Cast bottled at 43% alcohol by volume and sells for anywhere between $115 and $128. So when talking about a Dow Winnie distillery, there are two things that typically get talked about. The first is the claim that Dow Winnie distillery uh, is at the highest elevation of all distilleries in Scotland. However, if you search around the internet, there is also a claim that uh, Braes of Glenlivet or Braval is just a couple meters higher. 
So, now does it make any difference which one's higher? No, but it's something someone likes to tag on to their name or their reputation. You know, the tallest stills, the fattest stills, the shortest stills, the widest stills, the longest fermentation, whatever, whether or not it has any actual impact on the spirit. It's just a factoid. It comes up in quizzes, it comes up on quizzes. So if you're ever on a game show, you're gonna wanna know who is truly the high, at the highest elevation? Is it Braval or is it Dawani? Apparently, by a couple meters, it's Braval. All right, the second thing Tennessee had talked about uh, Dawani is that they went from worm tub to shell and tube condensers, didn't like it, and went back to worm tub uh, condensers, as you saw there in the history. I have a whole nother video I'm gonna do uh, that will follow this one shortly, in which I talk about quite at length uh, the differences between um, shell and tube and worm condensers and how it's not just a matter of one versus the other, but there are other things you can do in the use of them in terms of the, 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 the uh, flow of the vapor going through them the, and the size and the temperatures and all that. So it's just not, it's not just a matter of Shell tube versus worm tub. There are other factors that get involved, and of course, in the production of Scotch whiskey, there are a gazillion other things that come into play. Everything from the type of malt, uh, the size and shape of the stills, how you do your cuts, the type of cast, and the climate in which the cast in, whether in a dunnage warehouse, whether in a rack warehouse, and so on and so forth, right? So, this is just one little factor, but it gets talked a lot about when you talk about Dalwini Distillery. Now, let's get into this whiskey. So, I've only had two bottles from Dalwini. Uh, that is this Distiller's Edition and Lizzie's Dram. Both of them, I would say, are sort of an even keel expression of uh, bourbon cast and sherry cast. However, the claim is, is that this one is Oloroso. It's double matured, and they talk about being Oloroso. Um, one, let's look at the color. Two, and on the nose and the palate. The notes out there are a little conflicting. Some are saying that it's double matured in Oloroso. Some are saying it's double matured, finished in Oloroso. I'm inclined to believe the latter, that it's bourbon cast and then finished in Oloroso. One of the challenges in studying whiskey is the information out there, including information on websites, is not always reliable. I never look to just one source. I tend to read multiple sources and take them with a little bit of grain of salt because the information isn't always accurate. Even books by your well-known whiskey writers can disagree and, and, and be wrong. So you have to kind of do your research and, and look into it. I would say, based on the nose and on the palate, this spent some time in bourbon cask, spent some time in sherry cask, unless those sherry casks were really tired, really tired. I mean, again, look at the color, look, look at the color. It's sort of a golden color. And then on the nose, you get dried fruits, stone fruits, dried apple, dried pear, get a lot of vanilla, get a little bit of a, a nuttiness there, maybe a little bit of caramel, a little bit of marzipan. On the palate. Starts off sweet, tropical fruits up front, vanilla, caramel, maybe some dried apples, and then it sort of dries a little bit goes a little nutty on the back end. So um, dried fruits up front and a little bit nutty on the back end. Just a hint of a little of that marzipan character on that as well. Sherry, although it's a sherry being aged uh, oxidatively rather than biologically like pheno, although it's a sherry provides you those dry nutty notes. And that's where it's coming from. I like the fact that it starts off a little bit sweet up front and so it's off drier on the back end and you get a little bit of that nuttiness. There is also a honey character that shows up mostly in, in the mid palate and sort of a grassy, heathery 
a hay, maybe like dried hay character. I think that runs all the way through that. And I think that's sort of a signature, at least from the uh, whiskeys I've tried. I did taste some whiskeys at the distillery, but in terms of bottles that I've actually spent some time with, it's mostly Lizzie's Dram and this one. I think it's a common characteristic in Dawini. Now, Dawini Distillery, being in sort of a high plains uh, with uh, distant mountains off to the side, and it's a spot where the water run, would run down and people uh, commuting via horse and wagon, that's a place they're gonna stop to get water. Consequently, uh, that's also a good source for water for building a distillery and there's no other distilleries in the neighborhood. It's sort of out there in the boonies. I would say the nature of the whiskey is similar to its location. I'm saying it's derived from its location. Just a sort of reflect, just sort of reflective of it, and that is, just as Dalwini is sort of, yeah, it could be part of the Highlands, could be part of Speyside. It's sort of out in the middle of nowhere in this high elevation. In a similar fashion, it's sort of in the middle between expressing a bourbon cask and sherry cask. It's in the middle between being sweet up front and then sort of dry and nutty on the back end. It has this sort of uh, dua this duality and this um, play uh, between between the, uh, the both. It's sort of a, it, it result is you sort of come down in the middle uh, of this whiskey. It's not uh, super attention grabbing. It's not super expressive. It's just sort of a little of this, a little of that, and it's a nice dram, but it's not something that's gonna be ultra memorable. It's not something that's gonna grab your attention. It's not something you're gonna walk away and go, wow, that was absolutely superb and mind blowing. It's just, I would say, a really good dram, a really good dram. I do like the mouthfeel on it. It has a nice viscosity uh, to it, nice, nice mouth coating character to it. So it's actually a really nice whiskey. Now, price, quality wise, you're over a hundred bucks, you're pushing 120. That's the real challenge. That's the real challenge because I think there are a lot of other whiskeys out there, um, particularly say Abelauer. Abelauer has real nice whiskeys in which they um, do that 50-50 with uh, bourbon cast and sherry cast and they tend to be under a hundred bucks, say like the Abelauer uh, 12 year old. That being said, it is a very, very, very nice dram and wouldn't be upset if anyone uh, gave me a bottle. What would I give in terms of a score? I'm gonna go solid 87 points, a solid 87 points. All right, uh, that's it for this video. You subscribe to this channel. I wanna thank you very much. If you've not yet subscribed, but you like watching my videos, ask you to subscribe, ring the bell to be notified for when I go live or post a new video. And until next time, Slanjiva. Hey, don't forget to subscribe and check out these other whiskey videos.